Namaste dosto. You guys know that I've traveled to every single union territory and state in India. And from all that experience, I want to share with you four places which are often overlooked by travelers. These places blew my mind and blew my expectations and they made me wonder why aren't people traveling here? So if you want to experience something new and you want to get off the beaten tourist track in India, these places are for you. First up, Lakshadweep. This is India's smallest union territory and it's a collection of about 36 islands and these are not any type of island. And I've been to Fiji, I've seen some of the most incredible islands in the world. These are the most idyllic islands I have ever seen in my life. It's like an Indian island paradise. It's just clean and it's untouched. And I think the drone shots speak a lot better than I could ever tell you about this place. The reason people don't travel to Lakshadweep so much is just because in the past there have been restrictions and it is quite difficult to get to, but I've made an entire video on how you can visit Lakshadweep, what are all the options. And one other thing I would say is, in the last one year, there's been a lot of controversy and politics on the island, so, or on the islands. So just read about that before or while you're planning your trip. From the smallest union territory to the second least populated state in India, Mizoram. I had no expectations when I went to Mizoram. I did not know what to expect. I just jumped in a sumo in Manipur and they took me to Aizal in Mizoram. But I was blown away by Mizoram and the hospitality of Mizos. The entire northeast is stunning, but the location of Aizal in the mountains it just makes this city spectacular. There's this incredible walk that you can go on near the city and it feels like you're amongst the clouds and looking down at this green paradise. It feels like Aizel has just been dropped in the middle of a remote jungle and that makes sense because this state has around 91% forest cover. Mizos are tribal people so go there and experience tribal culture, food and fashion. The next state, I cannot for the world of me understand why it is not a huge tourism destination. It should be already. It has left such a mark on Indian history. So many famous people are from this state. This state has deserts. It has incredible national parks. It has nice beaches. This state has incredible festivals too. So you have Otarayan, the kite festival, that could be my favorite festival in all of India. And you have to go to the state to really experience it and kite flying. These guys take it to the next level. They also celebrate Navratri and they celebrate it with these incredible dancers, Garba and Dandia, folk dancing. And they don't do it on a small scale, okay? Garba is done in massive stadiums. It's that big. And you probably know by now which state I'm talking about. The state is Gujarat. And I also want to talk about Jew as well. And so every single time I go to Gujarat, I wonder to myself, why aren't there more foreigners here? There should be. And I actually tested out this very video idea on my wife and my brother-in-law about a year and a half ago. I said, come to Gujarat, trust me on this, you're gonna love it. And they're like, huh, okay, we'll come. And so they came with me and they absolutely had a blast and they fell in love with Gujarati food, Gujarati people, Gujarati culture. They started learning about a Guju language, Kimchol, Saras Che. Yeah, they had an incredible trip to Gujarat and they would both go back again. So yeah, the proof is in the pudding on that one. and. Yeah, I guarantee you'll love Gujarat if you go there on holiday. And if you're a Gandhi bucked like me, Gujarat is absolute heaven. You can go to where he was born in Porbandar. 
you can go to where the salt march ended in Dandi. You can go to his ashram, Sabamati Ashram in Ahmedabad. For history lovers and Gandhi lovers, like, perfect place for you. Gujarati food is also a treat. They have a massive array of sweet and spicy vegetarian foods. And surprisingly, some of the best meat I've ever had was in Gujarat as well. And if you do go, do not forget to end in a little place called Dew. Dew is an island off the coast of Gujarat and part of the Union Territory of Dadra and Naga Haveli and Daman and Dew. These two used to be separate Union Territories but they got put together into one. It's a very chilled out and beachy place and it used to be a Portuguese colony so it's got that flavour mixed in as well. It's basically like Goa but way way less commercialised and way less mental and busy. And I remember I went there. It's just a strange little place. I found a hotel and the rooms were on top of a church. I was sleeping on the roof of a church and in the morning I go down to this Portuguese lady's like little garden restaurant in front of her house and she was cooking from her kitchen and serving to this restaurant in her front garden. This this Portuguese food. Yeah. It was just an awesome place and I always remember. I always remembered you. And finally, the last state that I'm going to recommend in this video and I could go through every single state and union territory in India in a video and I could recommend them all for different reasons because every single state in India is incredible. But I've chosen the ones which are less visited and, and that I think deserve more attention. And so this state is Odisha. If you want to go back in time and experience ancient India, I would take a trip to Bhubaneswar and Puri in Odisha. I just remember when I when I got off the plane in Bhubaneswar, I just felt like I'd gone back in time. And I mean it in a good way. I felt like I was in a part of India which hadn't changed in a long time. For example, we found a temple in Bhubaneswar and the priests were cooking there. The priests had a kitchen on the side of the temple. And they were cooking from ancient recipes, hundreds of years old. And they were only using indigenous ingredients. That's how ancient these recipes were. No imported ingredients, only indigenous Indian ingredients. And then after the priests are done cooking, it's blessed in the temple. And then it's sold at the market right next door to the temple. I've never seen that anywhere else in India and it was absolutely incredible. Odisha is known as the land of temples. So if you want to explore Hinduism, then I think places like Puri and Bhubaneswar should be high up your list. It's also known for handicrafts. Entire villages are filled with craftsmen producing traditional art. And I guarantee by the end of your trip, you would have fallen in love with Gugni and Ras Gula. Jay Jagannath. Now, over to you. Tell me in the comments. Where is a place in India that you went and you thought, why aren't more people coming here? Leave it in the comments.